my roommate, my first roommate at the time, Stephanie Vargo, she, I think, had gone to see No Shelter, and she said, oh, we've got to go see these guys. And so then, you know, I met John, and then we started playing music together. So he, he was one of the one of the few people that could really get into any genre of music, really, and he appreciated Irish music as well, so that was kind of get nice. Back to, John came to us, and uh, we knew him, because I had seen, you know, I'd seen No Shelter. I remember seeing No Shelter at the Lion's Walk, and I always thought, this is the interesting guy in a band. Bob Wagner is a great, great guy, too, but John always interested me, because, you know, he was this, you know, unbelievably expressive singer and he played the flute really well it fit in very well with that band uh, John and I I'm not sure how we got hooked up with uh, I think it was Brooke Dewar that had suggested that we come over and jam with he was playing with uh, Dick Vitale and Chuck Sullivan and I remember going over to I think it was Myron Avenue is where they lived and going and jamming with them and it worked out really great because we had no guitar it was great there was, he played, uh, Brooke Dewar played bass, and John and I were doing horns. John would, uh, John had a saxophone and flute, and I did the whistle and the clarinet. And um, here we were with two percussionists and a bass player, and we thought this was great, you know, it was something different. Because John and I had done a lot of uh, really out there jamming with horns and uh, with no shelter, which, you know, probably drove the guitar player crazy because we would just have a field day and did a lot of jamming, listening to a lot of Ferris Saunders, you know, a lot of any kind of free jazz John was into, and we would just riff and do things. It was great. It was really, really fun. Like a lot of people have a tune that's stuck in their head. Creighton seemed to have a gamelan stuck in his. He was always thinking about different types of music. He was always carrying something different with him, always had a book, always had a few records. And then when Sick Against Stone kind of came together, like I said, these people had all been talking about different kinds of music, musical theory, books, movies, and the same, these, these kind of uh, faceted interests in, in music. And so when it came together, it was definitely more musically oriented than anything you had seen up to that point. And I think it took a lot of just the basic punk scene kind of by surprise, because those guys were kind of, a lot of the people were just kind of more interested in, you know, two or three chord rock, lots of noise, getting up there, having a lot of fun, banging out a fun song. And here was a band that stepped up with multiple horns, multiple percussion you know, a, a, someone playing excellent flute. You had, and, and just these big groups on stage, more people than you've seen on stage up to that point in Pittsburgh, creating what was always kind of a gamble. And as soon as it started playing, you got the sense, I got the sense, it's in my ear yet, that the stuff was being invented right on the spot. That it wasn't like they came in with a set of tunes, it was like, here's the set of sounds. and. This is what it sounds like here. Somewhere else it's gonna sound completely different, but right here, and nobody was holding back, like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like it, it should right. sound or anything. Right. It was like, everybody was wholeheartedly just jumping in. John had no difference between what he did in the basement when you were just working on a song or whatever, and what he did when you were playing it live. Right. In other words, any performance of the song was of equal importance to him. And that's a whole thing in right. itself that doesn't happen very often right. with anybody, any musicians, that he just treats it like, um, that's that, thing. It, it, it is, it, that moment is the thing, that is it, that's the most important performance of the song I've ever given. And he did that every single time. It didn't matter right. whether there was nobody or whether there was a crowd. It made no difference. It was the most amazing thing to hear him play. It like, you would think a solo instrument, what can that do? It filled up everything. Just filled it up. It, you, you listened to the intensity, as intensely as it was being presented. And it wasn't like here's a, a virtuoso horn guy. It was like here's here's a guy who's, who's really putting the spirit across. And there was nothing filtering what he was pouring out. And he said, you, you found yourself just dropping all sense of pretense and self, right? And you were following along and listening to it and saying the guy would transport you that quickly.